students. Today we are going to learn about the periodic table. What? What? Yes. The periodic table can be easily remembered through a series of trends and commonalities. For example, we will learn about periods, groups, special elements, and how energy affects the organization of the periodic table. It is most commonly defined as a table of elements arranged by increasing atomic number so elements of similar atomic structure are together. Does anybody know what periods are? <laughs> Brayden! Why are you yelling at me? It was Amanda. Got him. Okay class, focus! Periods are the horizontal rows of the periodic table. Elements in the same period have the same number of electron shells, and electron shells are where the electrons live. So are elements grouped any other way? Great question. Elements can be grouped many different ways, but one way is what group they're in. Brayden's in the group of nerds. Amanda's in the group of... Yeah? Say it. Um... Um... Uh... Brayden, sit down. I'm gonna sit down. Silly children, groups or families, as they're called, classify elements based on similar physical and chemical characteristics of outermost electron shells. For example, the core charge of an atom. Unlike periods, groups are vertical rows. Does that make sense? Yes, I get it. All right, does anybody know where to find the noble gases? Ooh, ooh, Miss Bradley, Miss Bradley, I know, I know, Miss Bradley, Miss Bradley. All right, since no one knows, I'll explain it. The noble gases and valence electrons, which are the electrons in the outermost shell, occupy the full orbital. <laughs> what the? Ow! Brayden, no cursing. I didn't curse. I said ow, as in she just assaulted me. She threw a wad of paper at me. Suck it up. No, she just threw a wad of paper at me. No, Brayden. The noble gases don't react with other elements because they don't need other electrons to occupy their last orbital. Think of the noble gases as being less dramatic than all the other elements. Unlike Brayden. Moving on, Mendeleev grouped the elements based on the trends he saw. The next topic we are going to touch upon is ionization energy and electronegativity. English, please? They might sound bad, but they're actually quite simple. Ionization energy is the ability of an atom to lose an electron, while electronegativity is the ability of an atom to gain an electron. As we talked about before, the elements closer to the noble gases want to gain electrons because they have the most filled shells, while elements in the 2A group tend to lose electrons so they can achieve a filled orbital and become more stable. So this means as you go across the periods, the ionization energy gets higher? Exactly, Amanda. Wow, you understand. Shocker. So as the ionization energy increases, so does the electronegativity because if you really don't want to lose an electron, that must mean you really want to gain an electron. Jeez, you guys are amazing. You're amazing. You're pathetic. You're... Okay, so the last topic we're going to talk about is the atomic radius. The atomic radius goes in the opposite direction of ionization and electronegativity. This is so because in each period, since the electrons are all in the same level, it's going closer to the protons and is therefore increasing. On the other hand, in groups, the atomic radius is getting bigger because the electrons, each of these levels have shielding, which makes it harder for the electrons to attract to the protons. Therefore, the radius is bigger. Does anyone have any questions? I'll shield you. Since when is this a thing? Look at our schedules. We have chemistry.